Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install the DCS Simple Radio Client. I'm not going to be showing how to install the server but I will be showing the client. Um, so this is just, um, as long as you're not hosting a server, um, this is what you're looking for if you just want to be able to use DC DCS Simple Radio. First, what is DCS Simple Radio? DCS Simple Radio is a software that integrates with DCS World that allows you to use the onboard radios inside the jet you're flying to determine who can and cannot hear you. Basically, it allows you to use the radios in a real world situation. You tune the frequency in the cockpit of the aircraft you're flying to the radio of your colleagues or um, flight mates uh, to be able to hear them. Same thing with your AWACS and things like that. You actually have to tune the radio to the station in order to hear them. So if you have F-14s on one frequency, F-16s on another frequency, the F-16s will only be able to hear each other when talking unless they tune to the F-14 frequency. As long as they tune to the F-14 frequency, that's when someone flying the F-14 will be able to hear them and vice versa. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the installation first off. Um, I highly recommend you take a look at this get, getting started guide as it walks through the prerequisites that are required in order for it to work and it goes through the installation process step by step as well as usage and uh, what everything does and some troubleshooting steps as well if you run into any problems. Also walks through the configuration and lets you know what you need to map in order to allow things to work. Now some of this documentation is a little old um, but uh, we'll walk through all of that as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go back to the download screen. Okay, and it takes us here. What we're looking for, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. We're looking for this guy right here. Okay, just this one. We're going to grab that. Now, I've already grabbed it. So, we're going to go ahead and... Oops, wrong one. There we go. Come to our downloads folder. And I'm going to go ahead and extract this to a folder name. And the reason why is if you open it up, you can see that it actually has... Um, the all of the installation files directly underneath it. So if I were to simply, if you're using 7-zip for example, and you just hit extract here, all of those contents are going to go to this directory. So in this case, I'm going to go to extract to the folder name. Then we're going to open it up. We're going to run the installer. Once in the installer, the first thing here is you're going to pick the uh, installation directory for DCS Simple Radio. This is not for DCS World. Okay, and then down here, it's looking for your saved games directory, just like I've gotten it here. You don't have to find the DCS Open Beta or DCS World um, directories. You're just finding your saved games directory, okay? But it'll probably find it automatically. And you want to tell it to go ahead and install scripts. Um, and then you can have it create a start menu shortcut if so you choose. So we're just going to hit install and update DCS, SRS. Okay, installation is complete. So now we can go to the directory we had it installed. And you can see it right here. And then you can take the client here and just drag it down to your toolbar as I've done down there. And we're going to launch it. Okay, and now let's start going through some configurations. Before you ever hit connect, make sure you set up your audio devices. Find your microphone. In this case, this is my Rift. And here are my default speakers. Um, I'm not going to worry about those. I'll leave it on so you guys can hear the mic clicks, but I would set this normally to my, uh, or not my Rift, sorry, that's my uh, Pimax. And here are my Pimax speakers, but we'll leave it on these, that way you guys can hear things. All right, so let's move over to the controls for a second. Now you have your different radio buttons. Okay, radios one, two, and three, and then radio four, five, moving all the way down, if you have that many radios. But what we're going to do is we're going to set our VHF and UHF radios. So for the UHF, I'm going to hit set. I'm going to hit the button of my choice. It's just the mic switch up on the uh, hotel, the warthog, warthog, warthog throttle. And then for the UHF or VHF, I can't remember which one I did already. Um, we're going. To, I'm just going to use mic switch down. Now, all this does right now is selects the radio I want to talk on. This is not, if I press and hold these at this moment, they will not transmit. Okay, so you can set a separate push to talk button if you choose. So you would, for example, select uh, radio one and then hit a different button and hold it to actually communicate. Okay, but I'm going to do something a little bit differently that I'll show you guys. 
okay and also you down here if you have rotaries or buttons that you want to use to be able to change the frequencies um, you can use these down here as, as they have set um, all the way down to select next radio um, to uh, encrypt it uh, encryption is exactly what it sounds like um, and the radio channels if you want to be able to move the radio channels easily um, I don't worry about those I do it all in game through the cockpit alright so I'm gonna come down here to favorites now favorites is the um, exactly again what it sounds like your favorite servers that you'd like to go to in my case is going to be vcw13.com I'm gonna get my server address here and that's going to be 6a.99.82.136 okay and I'm gonna go ahead and hit add and then move the flag down so that way every time I launch the client this will this one will be the prioritized uh, channel we're going to go here to settings, auto connect. If you have a server, like the 104th, for example, I believe does this, where it uh, allows the auto connect, basically, once you connect to that server in DCS World, it will detect whether or not they have SRS running. And if it does, and they have their auto connect feature turned on, you will automatically connect uh, to their server. So, it, and then the prompt is do you want to auto connect to this server? Uh, that will pop up on screen. Um, most of these are pretty um, self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go through each one of these guys. Um, let's go ahead and come on down here to some of the more important ones. The radio effects and or receive effects and transmit effects. These are really cool. Um, these are the little popping noise that you'll hear when someone keys their microphone or when you key, key your radio. Um, I'll show you guys an example of that when we get into the server. Um, MIDS radio transmission effect. This is for the secure MIDS radio system. Um, the F-16 has it, the F-18 has it, um, although I don't know if they're actually enabled yet. I could be wrong on that. Okay, um, the clipping effect, FM radio effect, um, these are just different sound effects. Radio voice effect, this is a cool one. This actually, when other people hear you, it will sound like you're actually communicating over a radio versus how you guys are hearing me right now. You'll actually get that distortion that you hear like on TV when they're when they're talking over the radio if you've ever heard someone speak over radio before. Um, these, uh, the audio channels are cool. So right now what it means is if someone talks on radio one, I'm gonna hear them out of both ears. Okay, but I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it so if someone talks out of Radio 1, I'm only going to hear them out of my left ear. And if someone talks out of Radio 2, I'm going to hear them out of my right. And so it makes it real easy to know if you memorize what frequencies you're on, if you're aware of what frequencies you're on per radio, which obviously I would hope that you guys are, um, you'll know who's talking to you. So it makes it really handy, especially in a large environment. All right, everything else I'm going to leave as is for now. You can, you can create new profiles based on you know how you're logging in or what you're flying I guess um, or, or who's using your machine um, I just leave it as default I'm the only one who uses it so I don't worry about it too much alright and then now we'll go back to the general screen and we'll hold here for a minute and actually hold that thought I'm gonna go ahead and close this for a second I'm gonna relaunch it we can close this now we're done there okay and you can see that now that I relaunched it my favorite has changed now my my server is automatically connected Okay, so I'm going to launch the simulator and then uh, I'll get back to you guys in just a second. All right, so we're back in the simulator now. And so now we'll go ahead and see what some of this looks like in action. Um, let's go ahead and bring SRS up over here for a second. So first thing we want to do is connect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the connect button. And we're looking for three green at the very least. Okay, that's good. And that's good. All right. So as long as all three of these are lit, you're golden. Huh. I just realized it's giving us the longitude and latitude coordinates. That's interesting. That's kind of cool. That's new. Okay. That's kind of neat. So it's telling me what my position is. This is where I'm at actually in the sim. That's kind of cool. Um, 4,500 feet. That must be... AGL. Oh, radar altimeter actually shows us up at 12,000. I don't know where it's getting the altitude from. Unless it's referring to my physical position on the globe. Like my actual position. Huh. I'll have to look at that. I'm curious. Anyway, sorry, let's move on. 
Uh, ooh, shiny. So first thing is, let's talk about a couple of these things. Uh, show server settings. This is where you can see all the different settings that are currently configured on the server that you're connected to. Um, I won't go through every single one of these. Well, maybe we'll. Coalition security. This just means uh, red can't, e even if if you have someone on red four and someone on blue four, and they're both on frequency three zero five, but this is turned on, they will not be able to hear each other. Okay. Uh, with off, they will be able to hear each other as long as they're tuned to the same radio. Uh, spectator audio, this is someone who's not actually in the seat of a cockpit. Um, with the radios turned on, they'll be able to hear what's going on around them, but I don't believe they'll be able to transmit, obviously. Line of sight, you get behind a mountain or something like that, you may not be able to hear your uh, your buddy who's right next to you if, if you're separated. Um, distance limitations, this is the further away you get from each other, the um, less you'll be able to hear each other, just like you would in real life. Okay, um, not sure about radio expansion in real life transmission and uh, received behavior interference. Um, that's kind of cool. Um, again, I have everything turned off at the moment. Um, I just recently set that um, set that back up again as well, so I need to go back through all these. Um, but anyway, like I said, so a lot of this stuff, uh, pretty black and white. Um, let's go ahead and close this for a minute. Toggle the radio overlay. This is the overlay that we were talking about earlier. Now this um, is really more for um, the um, FC3 aircraft, um, but it's nice to be able to use it as a test. For example, um, let's go ahead and jump in the sim for a second. If I hit my mic, my UHF radio up, so I'm gonna go mic switch up. There it goes, sorry. So you can see that I've switched, so I have these reversed. Actually, I need to change these. Um, and you can see which radio is selected based on which mic switch I hit. Okay, so that's pretty helpful. Um, but again, for the FC3 aircraft is really where this comes in handy, for, for me anyway. Um, just because, obviously, with the Flame Eclipse 3 aircraft, you can't interact with the cockpit physically. Okay, so I don't really use it. Um, let's go ahead and bring our client back up. Toggle the AWAX overlay. This brings up everything that's currently out there. Um, all the different radio communications that you can set up for the AWACS if you are running AWACS. Okay. Um, and then toggle the client list that shows everyone who is currently connected to this particular server. Okay. Right now I'm obviously the only one. And then, um, so now, oh, that's kind of neat. Damn. Um, so the, now let's talk about scenarios and how to actually use it. So we know our mic one and mic two. So, um, mic switch down for me is the UHF, mic switch up is the VHF. So let's say I have a buddy who just joined the server, he's using SRS as well, and he got into a A10. On, and on the UHF frequency, he is set to, I don't know, uh, 272 megahertz, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to COM1, and I'm going to change this to 272 zero and hit enter and now when I transmit on com one he can hear me but when I was at three zero five he would not have been able to hear me through SRS okay and it's the same thing with the VHF so if you, if you have someone on the VHF and you change it to say one three three hit enter okay that's how you activate or use the different radios um, so really not a whole lot to it once you get it set up and even setting it up isn't that difficult. If you do run into connection issues, it's very likely going to be a firewall problem. Um, so make sure you guys check out that documentation that I showed you earlier on um, and make sure that you guys don't have any ports that are blocked. Um, it uses port 5002 if memory serves. Um, if you have any questions about how to unlock ports and things like that in your network, um, you're going to want to reference um, some support for whatever you're using as a router. Um, as well as your Windows firewall ports. And you can just Google on you or go on YouTube and search how to change Windows firewall port settings. Um, same thing with, you know, how to unlock uh, ports on my router. And I'm sure it'll guide you to it. Um, I don't want to get into that because I am not going to be giving you guys advice on how to uh, change the security settings of your firewalls. Uh, because it's exactly what it is doing and by opening a port you are creating an access point for software but you know we do it every day dcs uses it so it's not like it's a huge thing but i'm just not willing to be the one to tell you how to do that particular portion okay um but anyway i hope you guys have enjoyed this little tutorial and i hope you guys enjoy srs um on the bottom of the client uh, window there is an option to support them on patreon uh give them a little donation if you can he um 
uh, Sir Bob and his team. Uh, I don't. I'm assuming he has a team. I hope he has a team because this is a lot of work for one person. Um, but uh, if you guys have you know a little bit extra, you know, shoot them you know five bucks here, three bucks here, whatever. You know, just sh show them a little bit of love. This is a really awesome piece of software that's completely free, um, and it's it's really phenomenal. So uh, great work on their part, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.